interestingly enough, your marketing is very broad, as you and I both know. And 100%. I've come to learn, um, especially working with a lot of brands myself, a lot of different corporate um, <clears throat> brands, the, the, they think unilateral. They think, uh, and they almost train to do so. Um, yeah. so. So it's an interesting dynamic being from the outside. Before I move this along, where would you say your area of expertise? And this is, I'm, I'm talking for the audience now. Mm -hmm. Marketing, branding, those are, those are very broad scale terms, right? Mm -hmm. it's, you, you have uh, the, the, the print, um, you have television, you have yes, social sir. media, you have grassroots, uh, you know, you got traditional, non-traditional. It's so much in terms of, of, of that goes under this one umbrella called marketing. Where right. would you say your strength lies? My strength lies in funnels. All right, building digital funnels, um, especially. Mm -hmm. And then advertising around that. So that's that's where that um, that lies. Branding, I don't get too specific about branding because to me, everything is brand. Every communication is an opportunity for branding. So that's just more of an overall. I don't, so, so I don't know about specific spaces within that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to yeah, marketing, it's digital. Um Yes, I do a lot of influencer marketing and all that, all those things as well. But like my my bread and butter that I even that, that I love and I want to talk about so much is is just that infrastructure of a funnel where you can build um, some ads or however you want to bring awareness to, and then it just pushes people down to whatever the two to three actions you want to over time. Because it's it's a so this is what I get into. I feel like a lot of marketers focused on marketing, right? And they're great at marketing. This is where we messed up and um. And um, building and, and building products and not businesses a lot of times, especially marketers, especially with the music, right? Where a lot, marketing, branding, creativity comes natural to a lot of people, right? But the operations is where the actual business is, right? And I even know people who've blown up on social media, market brand products well, but then all of a sudden COVID happens or certain things happen and they don't really have systems or even basic customer service to sustain it. And when it comes to a true online funnel, it forces you to have consistent and sustainable operational infrastructure, you know, in there. And, and, and that's the part that I that I love about that one. Cause I because I don't like to just market for the sake of marketing. I, I, I like to market great products because that makes my job easier on the back end. And I like to have sustainable systems in the back end because both of those are going to retain the customer and help whatever I do become exponential. Okay, I, I, you, you're talking over some people's head right now. So I want to dumb it down because I want people to learn from this conversation. Okay. When you say yeah. funnels, for our audience, explain what that means exactly to you. And if you have any case studies of artists or brands that you work with and funnels that you put in place. Okay. So abstract, a funnel is, if you think about an actual funnel where you pour the water down and it comes in like an upside down cone, mm -hmm. right? That, that's the funnel you're taking people down. People say the top of funnel awareness is awareness. Then you go consideration, all of those uh, those steps. Uh, like and, and to me, everything really is a funnel, to be honest, right? Or every experience is a funnel, like a relationship. Bam, I made you aware. What up, girl? Start saying things up. You now you start to consider me, or maybe you opt out the phone. Or however it goes, I I got a finesse in, <laughs> when my car broke down with this key fix guy. And I was like, dang, I'm in this funnel, but it's too late to turn around. <laughs> um, but um, really, the simplest way you can think about a a funnel is just what experience are you taking someone down, right? What is the guided experience? Because even if you you have a bad funnel, it is a funnel. So if I take you to a, a landing page, what is there? What are they experiencing? What's the next step after that landing page? Is it going straight to a product or am I opting into a pay, um, a, like an email list or something? Is that email list following up? So there's, there's all these steps and what experience are you taking somebody down? The best funnels are controlled experiences, right? It, not too many options because when you create more options, right, there, there's fatigue 
and people decide to opt opt out or they decide later. Right? Oh man, it's too many decisions. It's, and there's been many studies. You know, you have 20 flavors of ice creams. People don't make it, uh, sales often don't pop off like if you have five to six flavors of ice cream because you, you're standing there deciding so much that you just say, hey man, I'm gonna do this later. It's like a lot of channels on TV. Um, so that's the funnel. Hopefully um, that, that's clear. But in terms of uh, case studies that I could talk about, I'll say, I'll say which one I wanna use. And you know this we don't is, necessarily is, have to go down that road if if you don't want. We could keep it um, more more broadband if you if you like. Well, no, I'll I'll say this. There's this guy. He's a social media um, kid, uh, kid in Australia. Not gonna say his name, but uh, it's um he was he first started popping on TikTok. And one of the big things for him to do initially, like, yo, I want to get more of a relationship with my fan base. And when an art, when it comes to an artist, companies as well, but when it comes to for an artist, it's extremely important to get a relationship with your fan base, right? So early on, talking about doing things like, um, doing like postcards, little contests, right? Like, hey, I'm gonna write and send you a postcard, or I'm gonna write you a note, or I'm gonna email you, or I'm gonna do a private call, just little things that might not seem extremely scalable, right? Because you can't do it with that many people, but early on, especially when you don't have money, it's, it's extremely valuable, especially on the back end. So, because what, what he's doing through all those experiences is, hey, whenever you wanna be into a part of these, you might not get picked, but I got your email. So now I can follow up with emails, mm -hmm. um, follow up with more emails. And what we did, I coupled his, like the, the fan base that was beginning to be um, curated and matured, gets to the point where um, he has a contest for, I'm gonna send a postcard that's signed by me and it's like 10,000 uh, people, right? That are submitting for it off of just a few posts. Now it's like, all right, let's release a song. So not only can I email you multiple emails to prepare you for this, I have you also following me on TikTok. This is all top of the funnel at this point. I also have you following me on uh, Instagram. We were able to, I have a, a release strategy of post, no money spent, where he followed the 12 steps and did the 12 posts um, that I that I that I wrote out for him. And he got on his first song ever released. He wasn't an artist yet. That's where we where the conversation started. He wanted to be an artist. We just had to get the, the fan base right. He was able to get a million streams without spending any money, all because he applied steps, but the steps were applied after he had built the relationships and they were already in the funnel. So you want, they're, you're warming up these people before you just take off. So he gets the organic. I don't know if you know anything about Spotify or uh, algorithms or anything, but uh, basically, you know, what's happening is you have these, these fans, right? Or these people who have awareness with you. Now it's like, I wanna bring them closer to me. Let me offer them things, right? Let me get more information on them. Now that I have that information on them, Right, and I've built closer relationships, more personal, uh, a, a more of a personal relationship with them. Now that I have their buy-in, and when I do something, right, I can really leverage that at, in certain moments. And a part of our push, right, was creating a, a certain level of scarcity and time where we can then get the fans to all engage. Once they engage, the way Spotify works. Right. There's algorithms. And when you get a certain amount of activity within an alg uh, the algorithm starts to pay attention and trigger it. Right. So now the algorithm picks it up. It starts to put it on curated playlist. He got reached out to buy a record label 17 days after releasing his first track ever. Um, zero connections. A dude in Australia, he's getting reached out by labels in L.A., but he just applied this specific plan. But it's all due to funnels. And there's I first really got into funnels doing what I did for him for a festival I built out. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.